how to make a mod with fabric. But firstly, what is fabric? Fabric is a modular modding toolchain targeting Minecraft 1.14 and above, including snapshots. Because fabric is modular and very lightweight, it can be quickly updated to function for the latest version of Minecraft, which also means snapshots. This means we no longer have to wait months for a mod loader to update. In order to make a mod with fabric, we need to create a development environment. To create this, start by going to fabric's github, which is linked in the description. Then, download the example mod by clicking the clone or download button and then download zip. Once it has completed downloading, place the folder that is inside the .zip where you want to store your mod on your computer. We can rename the folder to reflect the name of our mod. I'll call mine my cool mod. Opening up the folder will reveal all the internals of our mod. We can delete the license and readme files as they belong to the example mod. If you choose, you can add your own. Before we can start coding away, adding new blocks, items, we must set up Gradle. Open the gradle.properties file with your text editor of choice. I'll be using Notepad++, which is linked in the description. Once we are in the properties file, we need to change a few values. First, change mod underscore version to the version you want to give your mod. I will leave it at 1.0.0. Next, we will set maven underscore group and archives underscore base underscore name. If you don't know what these are, you can follow this simple rule. Set maven underscore group to net dot and then the name of your mod. If your mod contains multiple words, separate each word with a period. For example, net.my.mod.is.cool would be a valid name. For archives underscore base underscore name, we can just set it to the mod's name with each word separated by a dash. For example, continuing with what I wrote above, my-mod-is-cool. Now we must check to make sure the dependencies and properties are set to the correct version. We can do this by going to modmoose50.me slash fabric.html and choosing your desired Minecraft version. That is also linked in the description. Use the Gradle properties that they provide for that version. Once we are done, save the file and close it. Now we are almost ready to begin programming. Open up your IDE. This is the program that you will use to actually write the code. If you don't already have a favorite, you can use either Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ IDEA, or Eclipse, other great choices. I'll be using Visual Studio Code for this tutorial. You can still follow this tutorial even if you use other IDEs. Open your IDE. To get the best results when modding in Visual Studio, we should install some plugins. Each plugin is linked in the description and is super easy to install. Just hit the install button and it will open Visual Studio and install. Once the plugins are installed, click File, Open Folder, and select the folder your mod is in. The IDE should start to import the Gradle project. We can see this at the bottom left hand corner. If it doesn't start after 30 seconds, open the build.gradle file. Next, we must open up the terminal. Click View Terminal. When it's open, type dot forward slash Gradle Gen Sources with a capital S and hit Enter. Now we want to run our game with debugging support so we can see the game's output and efficiently debug. Type in dot backslash Gradle VS Code into the terminal and hit Enter. If you use a different IDE such as IntelliJ, type dot forward slash Gradle Idea or for Eclipse, type dot forward slash Gradle Eclipse. Lastly, we must set the settings for a mod that Fabric will load. Open up the resources folder and open fabric.mod.json. This will be filled with settings for the example mod. We will change these. The first thing to change is the ID. This is the mod ID and is very important. Set it to something that you can remember. Next, change name to the name of your mod. This can contain spaces. I'll set it to my cool mod. Then set description to one or two short sentences to describe your mod. Now you can set the author's array. If you have multiple authors, separate each with a comma and a new line. The contact field contains the links to the mod's website and source code. If you don't have them yet, just leave it alone. Write the mod's license in the license field. Next, we can set a mod icon. The example mod comes with a default mod icon. If you have a custom one, you can change the icon field to match the location you want to place it. I recommend placing it in assets, your mod ID, icon name .png. Next thing to do is change the entry points. This tells Fabric where the beginning of your mod is stored. The main of your mod should be located at net dot your mod's name separated by periods and then your main class's name. For example, mine is net.my.cool.mod.coolmod. Now we must create this file. Open source 
main, Java, net. Then delete everything inside. Then create all the folders that you stated in the main field. So for example, my forward slash cool forward slash mod and then create a new file that matches what it was in the settings. For me, that was coolmod.java. Open this file and add the package and class declaration. Then add implements mod initializer. The IDE should complain and suggest that you override the public void on initialize method. This is where you register elements of your mod that run on the client and server. Now, let's finish up the Fabric settings by going to fabric.mod.json file. If you aren't using Mixin in your mod, this is the file that specifies the settings for your Mixin injector. Delete the mod.mixin.json from your Mixin field and in the Assets folder. If your mod has any dependencies, add them. Success! We can now start modding to our heart's content. If you want to run the game to test out your mod, click the Debug tab on the left side and click the green play arrow. Want to learn more about modding? Make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future modding tutorials. Thanks for watching!